Hello everyone. Welcome to class. So please let me know if I am audible and visible and then we can go ahead with the session. So I hope I am audible and visible and you are able to see the presentation. Okay, so today's a short session that we will be having. This is a session on image-based questions in ophthalmology. So see now uh, in, in the trend of questions that's happening today, we are having more clinical case scenario based questions. We are having more image based questions. So keeping that in mind, this is uh, the first of the series of image based questions that we will be having. So um, let me start off with the first question. So see, this is the first question. Let's come to the first question. See, this is the first question. A 60-year-old woman presents with sudden onset of severe pain and blurred vision in her right eye. The examination reveals that she has decreased visual acuity. The eye is red, the cornea is hazy, and the anterior chamber is shallow. The eye is stony hard to touch. And this is the image that's been given to us. So now, what is the diagnosis? Is it primary open angle glaucoma? Is it adenoviral conjunctivitis? Is it acute angle closure glaucoma, acute anterior uveitis? Or is it a subconjunctival hemorrhage? So what will you call this? What will you call this? Okay, so what are we going to call this? Let me tell you, the answer is it is acute angle closure glaucoma. Now, why are we calling this as acute angle closure glaucoma? Because see, they are talking to us about an elderly female patient. That These are the pointers in the question. They are talking about an elderly female patient. They are saying that the patient has presented with a painful red eye, right? So, the presentation is a painful red eye. And when you examine the patient, they say that the cornea is hazy, the anterior chamber is shallow, and the eyeball is stony hard to touch. Now, what do we mean by saying that the eyeball is stony hard to touch? It obviously means that the pressure is very, very high. The intraocular pressure is very high. And what is the importance of this, of this image that has been given to us? Now, look at the pupil here. What can we say about the pupil? The pupil is a mid-dilated pupil. So, we have a pupil which is mid-dilated. And that actually is another very important clue. Because this attack of acute angle closure is actually precipitated by midriasis. So, it is often precipitated in dim light, in darkness. That is when we get this attack of acute angle closure. And you have this kind of a mid-dilated and fixed pupil. And that is also another important point in the question. So, all this tells us that this is an acute angle closure glaucoma. Now, here, there are typically two options with which patients, with which students usually confuse. So, one is acute anterior uveitis. Now, please remember acute anterior uveitis is also a painful red eye. But here, typically, they will mention about keratic precipitates on the cornea. They are inflammatory deposits on the posterior surface of the cornea. So, there will be a mention of keratic precipitates and also there will be the, the pupil is typically myosed. So, you have a myosed pupil here, not a dilated pupil. So, in acute anterior uveitis, the pupil is myosed because of ciliary spasm. And always students, some students confuse it with conjunctivitis. Now, please remember conjunctivitis is a red eye, but it's not exactly a painful red eye. Painful nahi hai wo. It is the complaint in conjunctivitis is often irritation, foreign body sensation, watering, etc. But it's not exactly a complaint of pain. That's also a red eye, but it does, it does not exactly qualify as a painful red eye. Okay? So, this is the first of the questions. Let's go to the next question. But before that, please tell me if the presentation is clearly visible to all of you. Are you able to see the presentation clearly?
Are you able to see the presentation clearly? I hope the presentation is clearly visible to everyone. Okay. Okay, so what is the drug of choice for this? See, the drug of choice for this condition is actually something which is going to myose the pupil, constrict the pupil and break the acute attack. So the drug of choice for this condition is pilocarpine. Pilocarpine is the drug of choice, but pilocarpine cannot be... It does not act if the pressure is very high. So that is why first you have to reduce the pressure by giving mannitol. So mannitol is the first drug that you have to administer in this condition. Mannitol helps to reduce the intraocular pressure below 40. And then if you give pilocarpine eye drops, that is going to constrict the pupil and break the acute attack. So pilocarpine is the drug of choice, but the, because that is the drug that is going to break the attack. But the first drug that is to be administered is actually mannitol. Okay, Chalo. let's go to the next question. Now, identify this investigative modality. What is this? Is it a USG B scan? Is it USG A scan? Is it an anterior segment OCT? Is it FFA or is it Indocyanin green angiography? What are we going to call this? What is this investigation? Will you be able to tell me? What is the investigation here? This investigation, this is called as ASOCT, that is anterior segment optical coherence tomography. So what this is, this is an optical scan of the anterior segment. So let me show you the structures in the anterior segment. So see, this is the slit of the cornea. This is the iris. Okay. So see, this is the slit of the cornea. This is the iris here. This is your anterior chamber. This is the lens. This is the crystalline lens. Here you have a shadow of the crystalline lens. And this, this wedge or this space between the iris and the cornea, this is the angle of the anterior chain. This is the angle of the anterior chain. So this investigation, it helps you to study the structures of the anterior chamber and it has got very great importance and it is of particular significance where in glaucoma because it helps you to study the angle of the anterior chamber. And in glaucoma, all of you know that it's very important to classify the angle either as open angle or as angle narrow angle because you have two types of glaucoma that is open angle glaucoma and angle closure glaucoma. So see, if I were to name these pictures as picture 1 and picture 2, will you be able to look at this picture and tell me which is an open angle and which is a narrow angle? Which of these could be called as OAG and which can be called as ACG if this is the ASOCT of a patient of glaucoma? So which one do you think is an open angle and which one do you think is a, is a narrow angle? So see, this one, this is an open angle. Why are we saying that this is an open angle? Because see, this, this space between the iris and the cornea, this is quite wide. Whereas this one, you can see that the iris is forward so that that wedge is very narrow. So this is a narrow angle. So this is how we can classify glaucoma as open angle glaucoma or angle closure glaucoma with the help of this ASOCT. That is anterior segment optical coherence tomography. So this is one of the applications of ASOCT. Okay, so this picture you should be able to identify because you are seeing the structures in the anterior segment. So it helps us to, to study the structures in the anterior segment and it's of particular significance in glaucoma. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Identify the field defect in this photograph. What is this? Is it a centrocecal scotoma? Is it a homonymous hemianopia? Is it an arcuate scotoma? Is it a bitemporal hemianopia or is it a pie in the sky? What is this? What is this field effect called? Does anyone know what this field effect is called? What is this field effect called? 
Okay, let me tell you, this is called as an arcuate scotoma. And now see, this is a field defect which is respecting the horizontal meridian. So, it is respecting the horizontal meridian like this. It is on one half of the horizontal meridian. It can be like this or it can be like this also. That is, it can, it can either be on the lower half or it can be the upper half. But it is respecting the horizontal meridian, right? Now, Defects which respect the horizontal meridian, they are generally glaucomatous field defects. So, this is a, this is a very, very typical to glaucoma. This is a glaucomatous field defect and it is called as the arcuate scotoma. So, the picture here is a superior arcuate scotoma. Similarly, you can have an inferior arcuate scotoma also. And if you have an arcuate scotoma above and below both, na, then we are going to call this as a double arcuate scotoma. So, in advanced stages, you can have something like this. So, in advanced stages, you can have something like this. That is, you can have an, a scotoma above and you can have a scotoma below also. So, that is called as a double arcuate scotoma. Okay. So, superior arcuate, inferior arcuate, double arcuate. So, these defects, they are actually respecting the horizontal meridian and they are glaucomatous field defects. Whereas the others, like for example, homonymous hemianopia, bitemporal hemianopia, pi in the sky, these are all neurological field defects. And neurological field defects, they respect the vertical meridian, meaning they will be on one side of the vertical meridian. Whereas this one, it is on one side of the horizontal meridian and it is a glaucomatous field. This is also another important image that you should be able to identify. Okay, Chal. now let's go to the next question. Simple but important question. What is the procedure that is being shown in this photograph? Is it gonioscopy? Is it keratometry? Is it applanation tonometry? Is it a corneal scraping or is it a specular microscopy? What is this? What is this? Is it gonioscopy? Is it keratometry? Is it applanation tonometry? What do you think this is? Okay, so this is correct. This is an this is applanation tonometry. That is, this is evaluation of the used for the evaluation of the intraocular pressure. Right? So let me show you a few images related to this. So see, this is your Goldman applanation tonometer. This is the Goldman applanation tonometer. Now, this Goldman applanation tonometer, it has to be attached to your slit lamp. So see, it is attached here to the slit lamp. It is attached to the slit lamp and this front portion, this is actually your applanation by prism. This is the applanation by prism, right? Which is to be, which has to touch the surface of your cornea, which has to touch the surface of the cornea, right? So here, what you have to do is you have to first make the patient sit on the slit lamp. Then you have to stain the Anesthetize the cornea, of course. You make the patient sit on the slit lamp. You anesthetize the cornea. Then you stain the tear film with fluorescein dye. So, what is the dye that we use? The dye that we use is fluorescein dye. And you have to put on the cobalt blue filter of the slit lamp. You have to put on this blue light that is the cobalt blue filter of your slit lamp. So, when you look through the eyepiece of the slit lamp, this is the view that you get. So, this is your examiner's view. This is the examiner's view. So, the patient sits on the slit lamp, you anesthetize the cornea and then you stain the tear film with fluorescein dye, put on the cobalt blue filter of the slit lamp and make this touch the surface of the cornea. Now, when the applanation by prism touches the surface of the cornea and you as an examiner look through your eyepiece, this is your examiner's view. So, what you see is you see two semicircles like this, right? So, these semicircles that you see, they are called as the applanation tonometry Myers. And you are supposed to take the intraocular pressure when these myers just touch each other. So, see, these two myers will have to just touch each other. And at that point, you have to take the intraocular pressure. That is the correct reading of intraocular pressure. 
ठीक है सो दीज आर अ फ्यू इमेजेस विच आई वॉन्टेड टू शेयर विथ यू अबाउट दिस प्रोसीजर दैट इज एप्लेनेशन टोनोमेट्री एंड दिस गोल्डन एप्लेनेशन टोनोमीटर प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस इज द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड टोनोमीटर दिस इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो दिस इज द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड टोनोमीटर Okay, now let me show you another picture of another procedure. What is the procedure shown in this photograph? What is this? Is it gonioscopy? Is it keratometry? Is it aplanation tonometry? Is it corneal scraping or is it a specular microscopy? So what is this? What is this? Correct. This is gonioscopy. Now, what is the use of gonioscopy? The use of gonioscopy is to evaluate the angle of anterior chamber. Once again, it's of importance in glaucoma, and this procedure also has to be done on your slit lamp only. So, for that, you need these lenses, or which are called as the gonioscopes. So, this first one, this is a three mirror gonioscope, and this is a four mirror gonioscope. This is a three mirror gonioscope. The first one. so it allows you to see three angles in one go whereas the second one this is a four mirror gonioscope it allows you to see all the four angles that is 360 degree in one go and it is also attached to it has a handle attached to it and when you see you have to first anesthetize the cornea make the patient sit on the slit lamp now insert this gonioscope and then you look through your eyepiece and when you look through through your eyepiece this is what you see you get to see the angle which looks like this and in this angle it's very important to identify this faintly pigmented line here so this faintly pigmented line that you see here this is your trabecular meshwork and this is very very important because see trabecular meshwork is where the aqueous humor is actually flowing out so this faintly pigmented line that you see here that is your trabecular meshwork now if you are able to see the trabecular meshwork as it is in this picture then we are going to call that angle as an open angle and if you are unable to see the trabecular meshwork then we are going to call this as a narrow angle or a closed angle so this is another way or this is the clinical way of evaluating the angle that is by gonioscopy and how with the help of imaging can you identify the angle that is i told you anterior segment oct so as oct is the imaging technique to study the angle this is a clinical procedure to study the angle by visualizing it with a gonioscope and what is the structure you need to identify as i told you you need to identify the trabecular meshwork if the tm is visible then you call it as an open angle and if the tm is not visible then you call it as angle closure okay chal now let's go to the next one okay now this is slightly tough question a patient presents with high intraocular pressure a subluxated lens and a reasonably and a not very good dilating pupil now what is the clinical photograph what is this what will you call this a primary open angle glaucoma pigmentary glaucoma phacolytic glaucoma pxf glaucoma neovascular glaucoma what are we going to call this any idea what this is these images are actually important okay this is actually pseudo exfoliation glaucoma or pxf glaucoma now this pxf or pseudo exfoliation glaucoma is a part of what we call as pxf syndrome now what is pxf syndrome in pxf syndrome there is a fibrillar substance which is produced by the lens epithelium now this fibrillar substance pseudo exfoliative substance which is produced by the lens epithelium it gets deposited in different ocular structures right so see it gets deposited in the trabecular meshwork and it gives rise to what is called as pxf glaucoma that is high intraocular pressure it gets deposited in the trabecular meshwork and it gives rise to pxf glaucoma it gets deposited in the zonules in the ciliary zonules and as a result it can give rise to subluxation of the lens it gets deposited in the pupillary rough like this see it's getting these white white dandruff like scales that you see in the these dandruff like scales at the pupillary rough in the pupillary margin you get this and you can also get the same deposition on the anterior lens capsule to form this pxf ring 
So these kind of dandruff like scales at the pupillary margin, this kind of a PXF ring on the anterior lens capsule, presence of lens subluxation and high intraocular pressure, all this constitutes your PXF syndrome. So this pseudo exfoliation glaucoma is actually a part of this PXF syndrome which constitutes all this. Okay, so that is why this is the answer. So the images that I wanted to show you are these two. See this whitish ring on the anterior lens capsule. This is the pseudo exfoliation ring. These whitish dandruff like scales, these are also due to the deposition of pseudo exfoliation. Right? Let's go to the next one. A young myopic patient presents with high intraocular pressure and the clinical photograph is given to us. Now what is the diagram? What are we going to call this? Primary open angle glaucoma, pigmentary glaucoma, phacolytic glaucoma, PXF glaucoma, neovascular glaucoma. Bisco kya bulenge? What are we going to call this? Okay, so this is also slightly new. So this is called as pigmentary glaucoma. This is pigmentary glaucoma. Okay, now pigmentary glaucoma typically is described in young myopic male patients. Young myopic male patients, may this is typically described. Now here what happens is that the posterior iris epithelium, it rubs against the zonules. The posterior iris epithelium, it rubs against the zonules and it loses its pigments. And these pigments, they get deposited in different ocular structures. So, one, they get deposited in the corneal endothelium. So, see, these pigments, they have got deposited in the posterior surface of the cornea. That's the corneal endothelium. Now, this has a name. This is called as Krukenberg spindle. This is called as Krukenberg spindle. So, deposition of the iris pigments on the endothelium of the cornea, this is called as the Krukenberg spindle. And at the same time, these pigments also get deposited in the trabecular meshwork and they cause an increase in intraocular pressure, which is called as pigmentary glaucoma. So, all of these things together, they are called as the pigment dispersion syndrome or PDS. So, pigment dispersion syndrome or PDS. Now, this pigmentary glaucoma is actually a part of this PDS or pigment dispersion syndrome. So, let me just repeat this once more. Pigment dispersion syndrome, this is typically described in young myopic male patients. Here, the zonules, they rub against the posterior iris epithelium as a result of which the iris epithelium loses its pigments. These pigments get deposited in different ocular structures. So, two main places where they get deposited is number one, they get deposited on the corneal endothelium falling for forming this Krukenberg spindle and they also get deposited in the trabecular meshwork causing increase in intraocular pressure which is called as pigmentary glaucoma. Okay, so this, these two questions that is about pigmentary glaucoma and PXF glaucoma were actually difficult questions, but they have these typical images. So they have a possibility of coming in image based questions and that's why I wanted to show you these. Okay, so let's go to the next one. A patient with a previous history of CRVO presents with high intraocular pressure. And the clinical photograph is given. Now, what are we going to call this? What are we going to call this? Is it phacomorphic glaucoma? Is it neovascular glaucoma? Malignant glaucoma? Inflammatory glaucoma? Or pigmentary glaucoma? Yeah, this is easy. This from the picture only you can diagnose. This is neovascular glaucoma. So see, look at these new blood vessels. This is NVI, that is neovascularization of the iris, right? And after neovascularization of the angle comes NVA, that is neovascularization of the angle. So NVI, then NVA and neovascularization of the angle will eventually lead to NVG, that is neovascular glaucoma. So NVI, that is neovascular Vascularization of the iris leads to NVA, that is neovascularization of the angle, and this eventually leads to NVG, that is neovascular glaucoma. Right? So now the one, one thing that I wanted to share with you is why have they given us a history of CRVO? Because see, these glaucomas that we have been discussing, like they are all secondary glaucomas. So neovascular glaucoma is also a 
a secondary glaucoma which is actually related to the retinal ischemic disease disorders so conditions that give rise to retinal ischemia now which are the conditions that give rise to retinal ischemia for example proliferative diabetic retinopathy crvo for example eels disease then we have rop retinopathy of pre majority all these conditions they give rise to retinal ischemia and when there is retinal ischemia there is increase in vegf that is vascular endothelial growth factor and this increase in vegf first leads to neovascularization of the retina first it leads to neovascularization of the retina but if left untreated eventually this is going to lead to nvi then nva and nvg so basically it's an anterior segment problem this nvg but the origin is in the posterior segment so this is actually a secondary glaucoma and that's why they have given us a history of crvo so see these disorders which give rise to retinal ischemia like proliferative diabetic retinopathy crvo eels disease and rop these conditions give rise to increase in vgf neovascularization of retina and subsequently if left untreated they will give rise to neovascularization in anterior segment in the form of nvi then nva that is neovascularization of angle and subsequently nvg that is neovascular glaucoma theek okay? hai so that is the importance of this history of crvo in this question okay so let's go to the next question identify the laser procedure that has been done in this picture is it laser trabeculoplasty is it laser iridotomy trabeculotomy trabeculectomy or surgical peripheral iridectomy so what do you think this is what do you think this is correct right this is a laser peripheral iridotomy so see you can see this opening here this is this is the laser peripheral iridotomy so iridotomy means making a hole in the iris so this is a peripheral iridotomy which is made with laser now what is the laser used here the laser used is nd yag laser nd yag laser and where where do we do laser pi laser pi is the done in acg that is it is done in angle closure glaucoma it is done in acg that is angle closure glaucoma now you can find this kind of a laser pi either supero nasally or supero temporally so sometimes yaha bhi hota hai sometimes it is here theek okay? hai so this is this is done in angle closure glaucoma that is acg okay so let's take up one more question this was a simple question let's do take up one more question identify the procedure that's been done here what is this is it a laser iridotomy is it laser trabeculoplasty is it trabeculotomy is it trabeculectomy or is it a penetrating keratoplasty what is this what do you think this is okay let me tell you this is the trabeculectomy this is a picture of trabeculectomy which is the most commonly done surgery in glaucoma it's a picture of trabeculectomy which is the most commonly done surgery in glaucoma and here what is done is see in the superior part the picture that you see is of a patient looking down so this trabeculectomy this is done in the superior part here so what we do here is in this superior portion the trabecular meshwork is excised ectomy means to cut and remove right so in this upper part the trabecular meshwork is excised so that the aqueous humor is now directly flowing into the episcleral space from the anterior chamber so the trabecular meshwork has been excised so the aqueous humor is directly flowing into this episcleral space so see here what you see is you see that this conjunctiva it is like ballooned up like this it is ballooned up this conjunctiva and that is called as your trabeculectomy blip so here you see that you can see this conjunctiva it is raised or ballooned up because there is a direct access of the aqueous humor into this episcleral space so this is called as your trabeculectomy bleb this is your trabeculectomy bleb most commonly done procedure for glaucoma surgery for glaucoma i should say not procedure most commonly done surgery for glaucoma. 
ठीक है तो दीज आर अ फ्यू टिपिकल इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैड इन स्टोर फॉर यू टूडे we will be continuing this session we will be having another session on image based questions on 18 so today is the 14th so on 18th we will be having another session on ibqs where i will be discussing more images which are related to ophthalmology and i want to before we end the class there are a few important things that i want to tell you see this is the neat pg free test calendar for the third week of march so we are having these lot of free tests for for different exams that is for fmg exam for neat pg exam we will be having mixed bag kind of questions we are having image based questions so it is i think a good practice to participate in as many tests as possible because learning is one thing but to be able to recall whatever you have learned in the in the exam is 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 also a skill that needs to be mastered so please make a note of these important dates and do participate in as many subjects wise tests and grand tests as possible because that is what is going to make your preparation complete right now the next is right on the 20th of march you are also having this question on this neat pg exam on cardiovascular system this also is going to be a, a very it it is meant to test all of these exams that is combat or all the subject wise tests all these are meant to help you to complete your preparation for the exam and those of you who want to be a part of our plus platform and have access to all the live and the recorded classes that are going on there do enroll for the plus subscription and for that you can use my code that is doc sudha and another very good thing about our plus platform is our question bank which has about 25000 high yield clinical questions with explanations which you can practice and apart from getting an option uh, getting a chance to learn from some of the best educators for medical exams in india you also get access to this very good question bank which helps you again not only to learn but also to complete your preparation by, from an mcq point of view and if you want to be a part of both an academy and prep pattern then you can go for the iconic subscription and for this also you can use my code that is doc sudha and this is this is a very good uh, offer that is available on the platform so do make a note of this and this is valid from march 15th to 16th and just to give you an idea about the batches that are going on on our platform see we are having this neat pg 2022 all educator revision batch for this may exam this is going to run for 2 months starting from the 16th of march to the 16th of may and all the 40 edu educators are going to be a part of this batch we will be having subject wise tests grand tests and and a very high yield last minute revision which is going to really help you to round off your preparation so those of you who are aiming for this may exam are in the last phase of your preparation this is really going to help you to round off your preparation become confident uh, before you by the time you appear for your exams and for those of you who are preparing for the fmg exam we are also having this focus fmg 2022 batch which is also a two month batch and here also we will be having a grand test subject wise test and uh, and a, a last minute complete revision which is going to prepare you for this fmg exam so depending on what is the exam that you are targeting there are different batches running on our platform so this is a good opportunity for you to to enroll for our subscription so if you want to be a part of the plus subscription which gives you access to both the live and recorded classes on the platform so you can use my code that is docs right so thank you everyone for being a part of this session as i told you i will be continuing this email ibq session uh, on the 18th of march that is today's 14th we will be having the next session on the 18th at the same time that is 9:30 pm right so do join me for that class also thank you very much bye bye